Hello YouTube, especially all you knife lovers out there. Finally getting another video put together in the Enzo kind of assembly series I've been doing. I've picked up several blade blanks, but it's taken me a while to kind of find some blocks of a stabilized wood and some things I like online. Figure out how I'm going to configure my next little project. Well, that's in place now, and I'd like to share uh, with you a couple of the parts that I'm gonna be using. Uh, first up is the blade blank. This one was ordered from uh, Thompson Knives online. Thompson's is an is a awesome place to pick up Enzo or any type of scanning knife uh, uh, materials, assemblies, kits, that sort of thing online. Uh, the O one was actually out of stock at D2. They, I mean, I sorry, at DLT. That's been my go-to source for a lot of knife stuff if you've watched my videos. But uh, they didn't have the O one in, and so I picked up the blade only from Thompson Knives and got a good deal on it, so check those guys out. The link is gonna be in the comment section below. You can see this is an 01, kind of a brushed finish. I like how the uh, grind, those kind of uh, brushed grind lines take a transition at the bevel. I think it's really kind of a classy looking knife. And I'm excited about getting this one assembled so I can add it to my series of knives to eventually, at some point in the future, test in the outdoors. Um, so I picked up a knife. I, I did one, if you've watched my other series, uh, with greening kind of a gold handle necker, a classic curly birch uh, scales that come with Enzo for the LMAX Trapper 95 mil that I put together. And so I wanted to go a different color uh, route, and I found one I liked online. It was mostly blue with a, with a kind of a red blood spot on it. I'll show you the, the original images on the screen now. And so when I got it, I was kind of looking at the angles, figuring out which way I wanted to cut it to get the knife handles out of it. Decided I kind of wanted to go with something a little bit more bush crappy, something thicker than a traditionally fine on an Enzo knife. And so I decided to, to do one cut and give myself a lot of wood to work with. And then a couple extra blocks, which I'll grab here. I don't know if you can tell, but I'm using an external mic this time, hoping to come out, cut out on the ambient in my storage unit since the windows are open and the uh, the ambient has a tendency to be loud. So I have a couple extra blocks over here that I'll be making some fire steel holders with at the end. But I, I picked up one that was mostly blue and I'll try to show you a close up here on it now if this will focus here. Try to convince, there we go. Um, had a lot of blue in it and when I cut through the middle, it turned into this kind of khaki fire red with some kind of mild blue in it. So the exterior was actually like this. And when I got to the inside, had this really cool kind of lava feel to it, like kind of like a fire. So I was really excited. That's one of the great things about working with these stabilized woods is you never know what you're gonna get when you open them up. And I'm really excited about what I have here. So these will be the outer uh, facing scales. And working with those, I'm gonna also do uh, some G10 uh, liners. And I'm, I've got these on eBay as well. Let's see how they go. I'm gonna have to, to rough them up pretty good, I know, but it should expose some nice red along the top so that it'll look kind of like this with the blade going through here. Now, so far I've done mosaic pins and everything that I've assembled, and this time, because the handles are kind of so busy, I've decided to use some just standard pins. Now, I'm not sure which way I'm gonna go yet. I know that the lanyard opening is gonna be just a plain uh, stainless steel uh, lanyard tube that I've used in other videos so far. If this will focus, there's no limiter on this, so it kind of goes all the way around. I apologize. Um, so I have that. And I'm either going to use stainless Corby bolts or I'm going to use this kind of stainless plain pin here. Um, I haven't decided which way I'm going to go yet. I like the, uh, the screw on ability of the Corby bolts, but this is really heavy duty and it won't give much rotation. And I may wind up using this 
on this particular uh, set of wood. So I started you guys off with the intro. I began filming it uh, before I had my macro lens, but now that I have this lens in, I'm gonna try to use it on this series. Hopefully, despite some slower focusing, I'll be able to get you some really close up detail on some things. For example, let's try this here now, and let's just see if the focus will come back through in video. There we go. I can get significantly closer and show you kind of the the details and the colors and, and things I'm working with. May have to work on that a little bit, but again, I hope that that will actually allow me to do some cooler things with uh, upcoming knife videos. And as you can see, the the limiter uh, capacity of the, the lens going all the way through the focus spectrum kind of is annoying, but hey, I have to kind of pick and choose my battles. So these are the materials I'm gonna be working with. I did an intro again with my other lens showing you uh, I was trimming these up so before I had this lens and camera set up in, I, I did go ahead and do my outlining and stuff. That'll just save some time on video. If you've watched my, my previous videos, you know that I use um, pre-cut handle scales. I've got some debris on this, so I'll show you here, that are cut out. It's just some MTF board. And then I use clear um, templates that are the same size to figure out where I like the, the grain and things so I know kind of where my outline is going to be in relation to the grain that I'm using. And then I'm basing everything on the, ori the original Enzo design. So there you have it. There's the setup and that's what I'll be working with. Going to wrap things up. I'll actually take you through a fire steel uh, this time. I did make a fire steel for a friend when I did my Fisher knife. I did not video that series. I was between cameras. So I have done another knife in the meantime, but I did not do any video on it. So I'll show you a picture of what it looked like now. Uh, kind of the completed project. I did that for a buddy of mine and uh, that was a lot of fun too. But now I'm back to the Trapper series and gonna share that with you guys now. All right, so I just got through running the rough cuts on the uh, handles. As you saw, in the clip kind of before the intro discussion, I was trimming the, the handle scales down a little bit more. You can see I was, I was cutting these part, portions off and that left a little bit of a rough uh, finish. And so since after I get this down, I'm gonna be working from the outside end on all my sanding, I wanna make sure that this is as flat as I can be to start this off. So all I'm doing now is kind of resting the handle up against the blade and making sure that there are no major gaps or anything like that. Same thing with this side. So I just want it to be flat. I was just using some 80 grit. And uh, ultimately, I really want them to be flat because I will have this in the middle. I am going to rough this, this up. This is that G10 scale material. It is very slick. But I need the wood to be flat. I don't want it to be, uh, you know, too... Um, too wavy or uneven because I don't want it to kind of pull away from the scale or anything like that. So phase one. I'm going to go ahead and epoxy the G10 liners in place so that I can shape them down and go ahead and have them pre-aligned so I'm not trying to align the scales, the liners, and the handle, um, or the 
handle portion of the metal all at the same time. I pre-drilled some holes in the liners to try to help absorb some of the epoxy. What I'm doing is <clears throat> I'm using this tap magic oil to try to keep the, the bit cool and keep the metal from, from going out everywhere. But I'm keeping my bare fingers about an inch away from the blade on the metal um, to, to make sure I can feel how hot the metal's getting. Um, I don't want the metal to overheat. Um, I'm just going slowly there to make sure that there are no problems. So. I've showed this to you in my other videos. This is a uh, double bird carbide bit. And because it's tapered with a rounded tip on it, it'll start off in that pre-existing hole and then widen it out. And so that's what I'm doing with this bit. But as you can see, it's not very, it doesn't have, once the taper is complete, there's not a whole lot of flattening area. Hopefully this will focus here, hang on, there we go. It doesn't have a whole lot of flat area. It kind of tapers out and then stops right there. So what this is over here is a continuous burr bit and it's just straight up quarter inch uh, double burr with no taper. So as you can see here, again, if this will close up, here we go. There's no taper to it. It's just a flat quarter inch carbide bit, a little bit of that drill oil left on there. And what this helps me do is round out, make sure that hole is completely cylindrical and that there's not still a little bit of taper left at the bottom where this part of the blade didn't get all the way through. So that's why I have this. This is also can be used to make uh, kind of plateaus inside. If you don't have a Corby bit, you can kind of pre-drill and then use this to drill flat into the uh, wood so that there's a platform for the Corby bolt to grab onto. But anyway, dual purpose. So if I can get this again to focus here, I'll show you the ends. Yeah, there we go. See the tapered one at the top and the flat one at the bottom. So this does a good job of just making sure that that um, portion of the blade hole is completely flat throughout.
Anyway, all I've been doing is falling off the excess here. This handle's still way thicker than it needs to be where I want it to be. Um, but I am, uh, let's see if this will focus here. Here we go. I've just, uh, again, filed these flush. And basically what I'm gonna do now is go through and remove this glue up near here, the front, sand these down even with the metal and go ahead and start work on contouring. I don't know if you can see it too well on the top there, but I've kind of sketched out some lines, how I think they might look, um, I don't know, work well. And then kind of kind of sand and, and cut along those and work on uh, doing some shaping now. So there we go. All right, guys, I'm gonna show you this from this angle here now. What I've basically done <clears throat> is I've sanded the wood down to the metal along the tang on all sides. And now what I'm doing is I'm coming up with the profile shape that I want. And this is kind of three-dimensional, so it's twofold. From the top down, I'm uh, trying to build in a finger groove, palm swell, and butt swell, all right? So there's contour, kind of like the Bravo one. And what I'm also trying to do is make the knife slightly thicker at the top than at the bottom. So if you look at it from this angle, I haven't really done it much yet, but I want it thinner at the bottom and to kind of flare out at the top. And that will be somewhat similar to uh, the Bark River Bravo series, which I particularly like. So what I'm starting with first is the, the palm side. What I'm doing now is figuring out how I like the contours, how I like if I held it back like this, if I held it in a regular grip, how much palm swell, how much taper without it being super pronounced, um, because I would like other people to be able to use this knife or you know potentially sell it in the future. And so now I'm just trying to get that kind of contouring and it's gonna help, again, if it's slightly thicker at the top of the tang than at the bottom. So I'm gonna be going back and forth and what I'm basically gonna be doing is the entire right side of the grip first not completely sand it out but very much kind of to about 70 percent and then with the last 30 percent being just fine tuning so i'm going through and trying to make sure that the uh the pins are smooth with the contour once i like it both in the front and back and that the lanyard loop is doing the same and that i like the way the knife feels in the hand and then i'll try to mimic that on the uh inside of the blade which is kind of the outside, but the left-hand side of the handle. I'm using this uh, sandpaper that's new to me. This comes on a roll. It's 3M, this happens to be 150, but it's kind of got this uh, plasticky, rubberized um, longevity to it. It's supposed to last a lot longer, and it, and it does, but I like it because I can get my finger in there and feel the contours through the paper without it ripping. And it does a really good job of getting really tight along the top. So when I do this type of sand work, I can really kind of, uh, kind of determine uh, the, the contours. Whereas paper has a tendency to buckle, crack, form tight Vs, that sort of thing. So again, a little pricier, but I do like this so far. So that's just to bring you up to speed on kind of what I'm going to be doing for the next several, I don't know, maybe upwards of an hour, two hours or more, but the next you know, couple seconds to a couple minutes in the cut video.
All right, guys, my hands are about wore out. I've been doing this kind of freehand back and forth <clears throat> for about two hours. And, uh, you know, I'd get it kind of to where I want. I still have to do a little bit more work on, on a couple of these, uh, the pins here. Because once I start fine sanding, it's basically just beginning the polishing process. It's not going to really recontour anything. But it was feeling the grip, deciding now nah, I needed a little slimmer or I want these to taper in more, I want this to taper in more. And uh, I really do like where it's come, but I still have a little bit more to go, <clears throat> and then I will begin the uh, fine polishing. But that's where we're at right now. And as you can see, it's, it's starting to look like an actual knife now with a thicker bushcraft handle compared to what you would normally have on an Enzo. So I'm gonna throw this back in the vise, hit these pins <clears throat> again, and make sure that they're as flat as I can get them, but yet still contoured, and then I'll start fine sanding it. All right, now I'm taking some uh, CA glue because there are a few areas where there is uh, some very, very fine lines in the wood. And Now I'm going to keep my thumbs away from this because it <clears throat> the CA glue dries quickly and it'll heat it can heat up the sandpaper in a cloth if you use it. it causes a chemical reaction or it embraces the chemical reaction of the drying and all I'm doing now is sanding the surface of those fine lines to try to get them to fill in with sawdust. All right, guys, basically got the knife wrapped up and now I'm gonna take on the fire steel component. Again, just a block of the wood that's left over from what I didn't use on the handles. Uh, a matching stainless steel tube that uh, matches what's in the knife and then a basic ferrocium rod here. And so the concept of this is fairly simple. I'm just gonna keep this somewhat of a block shape. I'm just gonna slightly taper it. So instead of it being completely level like this, it'll taper slightly toward the front, drill a hole in, to have this go um, into the block handle about so far, and then have this come through sideways like that and uh, polish it all off. That's basically all I'm gonna be doing. So let's get to it.
sorry I don't have my mic cooked up yet again. I don't know if the camera's picking up, but it's raining. Why wouldn't it be? Assembling a knife for the first time in weeks. Rains every time. Probably heard that. As soon as this epoxy gets in play, I'm rolling inside. All right, I use these larger files to get the uh, larger portions of the steel removed, the stainless steel removed from the lanyard loop. And now I'm just using these like diamond coated small files to really fine tune <clears throat> the edges. They have a little bit of sharpness left and this will just help um, blend them into the wood surface without taking huge gouges out of the wood. I find especially in recessed areas, even with the recessed um, style file like this one with a rounded portion um, it tends to to grab the wood and just do a lot of damage to it so um, I'm just using these small diamond files to blend with the surface <clears throat> of the wood you get any resistance away I can make very fine kind of contour uh, shapes or or passes with this in very small movements and these little uh, the diamond coating is also a much, much finer surface uh, than the standard file, so it leaves smaller and finer scratches in the steel, which uh, makes transitioning up through the grits of sandpaper um, a lot easier without leaving really deep, hard scratches that, are, that just take forever to get out um, <clears throat> with sandpaper. So this is this will do a good job of blending it and uh, preparing the, the surface of the metal to receive the uh, sandpaper. And then all I'm gonna do now is just take this countersink and just kind of rounding out the inside of the lanyard opening so it removes any roughness, kind of deburs it. It'll keep the uh, shock cord that I run through it for securing it to the uh, fire steel loop on a sheath from um, getting uh, snagged and, and torn and things like that as well. So just kind of cleaning it up. You may see me early. This is a uh, rounded diamond tipped um, file and I'm just kind of passing it on the inside of the opening there to make sure that any residual glue or anything that may be stuck on the inside is taken care of and now I'm going to take a pipe cleaner and just double it up and use it to try to get any of the excess residue out of there <clears throat> before we move on to uh, sanding this out to the final shape that I want and then fine tuning it and polishing it up. As usual, I'm using some more of that 3M kind of long lasting um, elastic sandpaper to get the glue off of the surface and really just kind of rough out the final shape that I want after obviously doing most of the heavy work on the sander itself.
Good morning guys here on the final uh, segment of this video and that is the final product. Now this is not an Enzo sheath. This is a uh, older uh, number six Blind Horse Knives sheath which I do really like the design of but it is the only sheath that I have right now that will hold uh, this knife because I designed it much thicker, uh, much thicker handle than typically comes on an Enzo, and so their sheaths are not designed to accommodate those. I'll show you a quick comparison here in a minute. So I will be ordering probably a number nine sheath from uh, what is now Battle Horse Knives. Great design sheaths, have the dangler mods and everything like that, but a little bit more suitable to a knife this size. So that part of my estimation did not pan out, but I'll take care of it in the coming weeks. So let's look first at the fire steel loop. Hopefully this camera is going to behave and focus okay for me this morning. And uh, it just doesn't have a limiter switch, so it goes through the entire range of emotion, if you will. So all I've done here on this is a piece of shock cord, and I've got uh, a double uh, fisherman's knot. So as tension gets on it, the knots pull closer together, and I've just burned off the ends a little bit. And here is the wood that I used on the fire steel loop. And uh, if you saw earlier in the video, I originally thought I was going to be getting a lot of this royal kind of brilliant blue with a little bit of red kind of splashed in. And that's kind of why I bought the wood. But as uh, you may be aware, or can imagine at least, with uh, stabilized woods and or any kind of wood, when you cut into the middle, you never know what you're going to get grain and texture wise. So all these amazing colors popped out. You've got these blue greens in here, in addition to these royal blues, some, uh, some yellow in here, light to dark, uh, kind of a peach color, and into the uh, red and uh, orange spectrum. Very, very pretty. Um, a whole you know, arsenal of colors that I never expected to get. So, you know, really kind of cool. And that's what makes this so fun. Uh, you start a project thinking one thing and you may very well get something else. And uh, considering that I thought I was going to have a lot of this with a little bit of red, let's take a look at how the knife came out. And here it is. Uh, stand back here and get this in kind of full profile, let you see how it looks, and then I'll show you a close-up. Um, as you can see, this direction much, much thicker than a standard Enzo. Here is one that I did in a previous video. You may have seen um, it has the, the stock uh, curly birch scales. I just did an assembly with my own pins, and I will come up here now and see if this will do a, there we go. Closer focusing, you can see the profile much, much thicker um, on the bottom versus the one on the top. So uh, that is not, that is why it would not fit in the Enzo sheath, but nevertheless, um, I love this. I think it's awesome. I think it's beautiful. I like how the handle came out for me. Um, it took forever. The actual sanding of the, the this sanding this profile in here, getting all the contours the way I wanted them, since I don't have a, you know one of the professional belt sanders, uh, took about three three and a half hours to get all these pins sanded down. Uh, there's some contouring there. You can look at the contouring. Very very nice. Try to get it as level as I could with the pin. The pin doesn't stick up at all but you could feel a contrast between the metal and the wood. Just my level of expertise limits me kind of in that arena. But overall, um, really happy uh, about what I was able to manage with, with the stuff I do have. So let's go ahead and get up in here really close. Let this camera do its thing here and show you these colors. So not as much royal as I expected, but all these uh, deep kind of emerald blues and greens in here. Some of these light peaches and orange khakis and golds. Uh, just really, really pretty. Uh, you can see the transition there at the top. These did match. And as I sanded everything down, the matching disappeared. And here's the other side. A lot of that peach and orange, uh, golds, khakis, a little bit of the emerald in here. Just really, really a lot of fun. Um, you know, just really beautiful in my opinion. Super happy with how this uh, thing came out. And thank you for taking the time to watch this video and uh, take the journey along with me. Lots and lots of fun. Um, I do have one more knife to assemble. I have a 115 mil, so larger than this, uh, 12C27 Trapper as well. Now that is the knife that kind of came along in the Trapper series, I think to maybe even accommodate the, the, the 
those who wanted to find the badger, which kind of disappeared for a while. You can still kind of find it now, but um, uh, it's the longer version of the trapper. It gives you a little bit more blade length. The handle is the same though. The handle design is the same. So once I find a block of wood, I will be doing my final, uh, at least in this stretch anyway, Enzo um, build. I have no idea what to expect with that. Oh, I forgot to mention, the first time I've done liners too. Ha, sorry, I'm rotating the knife all around. These red liners are some, just some G10 liners I ordered off of eBay as well. I um, think it came out really nice. Oh, focus. Sorry, guys. Uh, I wanted something I can get super close on, which I obviously can do now. Uh, show you lots and lots of detail, but it's kind of being a pain on the focusing. And I had no way of trying this particular lens out before I bought it, so I apologize. But hopefully what we get in the end result um, is kind of justifies the slight weight having to get in the autofocus. There we go, some more focusing on those colors there. There we go. So um, anyway, I do have one more nice, as I mentioned, a, a larger version of the trapper. Once I find a block of wood I want to use, I'm not sure if I want to go with another stabilized wood or uh, with all these colors, the dyed stabilized wood, if I want to go with something more natural um, or if I want to move over and try something like a, maybe a desert iron wood. I'm looking at a couple options now. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this video. I certainly thank you for uh, taking the time to watch it. I hope that you found it interesting, entertaining, or maybe just a little bit soothing if you're like me. After all, that's why I do this. I love knives, but I love working with my hands and I find doing things like this just a, a really nice distraction from the hustle and bustle of life. And when I can't be in the outdoors, I like to try to do something at least semi-related. And so until next time, everybody, I hope you're enjoying your knives, your kits, your assembly, and above all, the great outdoors. And until next time, be safe and God bless.